Avi. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? How you doing, How you doing? bro? I was thinking right before I would come on, I was like, I wonder if I, if I stay in like a serious pose, like a, like as, as we come on, like a, like, will, will I be seen as like a serious, like cannabis journalist? Like, will that You us? are. Oh, you're a very serious guy. Yeah. Like, welcome to cannabis. Especially for your age, right? Like, <laughs> Wait, are you calling me too serious? You think I need to lighten yeah, up a little you're bit? Too, you're, you're very serious. I mean, <laughs> you're, you're in your 20s. You should be wilding out. I'm actually 30, but... Oh, you, know, you just turned thirty. Just turned that true. Yeah, no, honestly, okay. I keep telling 30. people I'm 29, and I I will probably continue to do so for about 10 years. I mean, dude, honestly, ending your 20s during the pandemic is, I mean, it shouldn't count. I shouldn't count. <laughs> That's right, man. That's right. Tiny Pie's got the right idea, though. That's what you should play once at the end of Friday's Friday. Here's here's something I propose. Maybe 2022 can be 2022, like as well, right? So. <laughs> we just make, you know, we just erase off 2020 and 2021 and go back and just call okay. that. So we're not looking for serious journalism here. So that that's the that's the impetus of this conversation. <laughs> but Javi, what's going on, man? I feel like it's been a busy week in cannabis. It's always a busy week in cannabis. What isn't a busy week in cannabis, right? That's fair. Well, I mean, well, I mean, there's tons to go over, but guys, we have an exciting guest for you today. One we haven't had on before in the ancillary side of the space. Um, it's Brett. He is the CEO and I believe co-founder of Foch. Uh, so Foch is the Greek word for lighting and light. So obviously they are a lighting company <laughs> in the cannabis industry. And of course, as you've seen, the ancillary side of the cannabis space has been very volatile, very poignant when it comes to the capital market side of the industry uh, with Grow Generation and Agrify and uh, several other hydroponics companies like Urban Grow also joining in. So Foch, to me, uh, joining the conversation at oh, yeah. a pretty rapid rate. So yeah, I, I'm indeed. excited to hear from him. And again, I, maybe lighting sometimes sounds like a not so exciting business. Maybe it sounds like something that, you know, we've heard about in the cannabis industry for a while, but here's the one thing that is, cannot be disputed. It's one of the products that is demanded all around the world, no matter the legality of cannabis. If it's legal, people are using lights to grow cannabis legally, but guess what? No one can, 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 can stop you from selling grow lights that can be used to grow tomatoes in any market and no matter if, if cannabis is illicit and especially in illicit markets, people are growing cannabis in their cupboards. Well, and these guys have a fantastic track record, have some pretty impressive partnerships with some of the other hydroponics companies in the space, which I find super interesting that their tech is utilized not only by their successes, but of course, other companies' successes. So we'll get to them in a second. I'm super excited to have Brett on to talk about it. Um, but welcome, welcome to Cannabis Hour. This is Elliot Lane, as you can tell. It's Javier Haas. Um, honestly, there's tons of news to go over. Javi, I like the ones you, you sent over beforehand. Yeah. So, uh, do you want to jump in and kind of chat about a few stocks that are moving? Yeah. I mean, this week I'm I'm I'm, I'm watching um, IIPR or mm -hmm. Innovative Industrial Properties. That is IIPR in the New York Stock Exchange. Pretty closely, this is a cannabis-focused REIT or real estate investment trust. Two big pieces of news out of uh, the company this week. First off, they bought 27, yes, 27 properties in Colorado, Pennsylvania, and North Dakota for $72.7 million. These guys are spending I mean, money to make money. But, I mean, they have a lot of it already. And they are continuously reused by the, by the companies they work with. And that is one yeah. thing you have to look at with lenders, with REITs. Do companies return to them for more capital? And I mean, if you look at there, just one company that comes to mind immediately is Forefront Ventures. Continuously mm -hmm. goes back to IIPR, and they are one of the original cannabis companies, the original MSOs in this space. You would think like if they have as many options as you want in cannabis, but they prefer IIPR. Yeah, no, indeed. And it's, it's, it's a very cool stock, not a recommendation here, but a very cool stock. And and honestly, they, they, they know how to do business and close business. So they have this the sale leaseback model that is super interesting. And for instance, they acquired 27 properties now this week. 
all of them are 100% leased for use uh, for like, uh, you know, dispensing or growing cannabis or processing cannabis, right? So they already have the client built into the transaction most of the time. Mm -hmm. That it, I mean, it's impressive. Fantastic. Did, I mean, did you call out some of the companies that they're getting in, the, in these properties acquisitions? It's Columbia Care, it's Schwaz, it's... Um, Gosh, there, there's one that I didn't recognize, but then there's another really well-known top tier player, uh, grower in the space. They're getting properties that are uh, associated with major companies, you know, so yeah. <laughs> maybe clients that they work with already or new clients regardless. Like, I mean, this is yeah. a huge portfolio builder for them that takes them over a hundred properties total. Yeah, it's crazy. Here, here you go. Here are some of the details. 16 properties are leased to a subsidiary of Columbia Care. Columbia Care is CCHWF. Four proper, properties leased to Schwaz, that is SHWZ. Three to Curleaf, C U R L F. Then um, three properties to so Livewell Holdings, one to Kaya Cannabis. So, you well, know, very interesting transaction. Yeah. They're one of the few stocks in this industry that I think acts like a big boy. If that makes sense, you know, I mean, I'm not at all demeaning the other stocks in this space. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's a very traditional business yeah. model run as a traditional business, right? It's, it's nothing crazy. Like we see in cannabis, I mean, crazy and like an, as an innovative and different and new, what these guys are doing is pretty straightforward. It's the, the kind of, of, of a business that dare I say Warren Buffett would, would invest in, right? Do you know like mm. Warren Buffett has this investment philosophy where he goes Warren like Buffett. only okay. invest in businesses I understand, right? So that's why he he took so long to invest in, in, in technology and he only invested in IBM probably like six or seven years ago when and he was like, okay, now I understand it, right? So IIPR has that kind of business, right? Where it's it doesn't matter if it's cannabis or not. In fact they it's, act like they've been there before. And they act like, you know, they belong with these other companies. And I mean, their performance, in my opinion, shows it. So props to them, man. And I mean, I think the dividends only strengthens exactly. what we just said. So what they did was also this week, because these guys are new machines. They keep us yeah. busy as hell. They declared <laughs> Q4 dividend of $1.50 per share. One fifty per share is a lot. It's like a $6 annualized dividend in an industry where most stocks trade below six dollars <laughs> yeah i mean honestly they are rewarding their shareholders and i mean they they have not been as volatile in share price as a lot of the other ancillary side of companies but that being said obviously they had a nice little dip there so you know as mt video battles pointed out 215, 221 be a nice, definitely a nice pickup. Honestly, they don't go that low very often. So uh, I can't say you're wrong. Granted, not not financial advice, but I'd put them on your watch list if nothing else. But let's keep moving. We don't want to we don't want to spend the whole time on IIPR. Um, I want to give a shout out to my guy, Mike Mills. You all know I love Mike Mills. Uh, I keep saying this. <laughs> if, it was, if I had a fantasy lineup of C-suites in the cannabis space, uh, I'd definitely include Michael Mills, Gary Santo, and um, Kim Rivers <laughs> between those three. And then, you know, there's a lot of people that, you know, I'm sure other people would argue, but those three are incredible. Uh, Michael oh, yeah. Mills has really had a fantastic year at Body and Mind. Um, he has just wiped their debt sheet clean, not against adding more debt if, if it's right. Uh, I think he's up to $8 million, uh, in revenue, um, which is 43% increase year over year. For yep. a, you know, I think a tier two, tier three MSO, um, you know, that's fighting for market share. I think it's, I think it's impressive. Yeah, yeah thirty million. It's like again, thirty million in, in annual revenue. They're at seven point five seven million for the first quarter on gross profit of, of, of three point five million. That is almost double what they made in the first quarter of, of last year, which was one point eight. Again, very interesting to see. Gross profit and even net operating profit, you know, of, of, of $320,000. Um, still, the net loss was a, a little bit under $700,000. Um, I mean, that's gotten yeah. better, too. I, I will say I think they've actually been more aggressive, though. So that doesn't bother me as much here. You know, with, with the, their expansion into Michigan and California with their seaside dispensary acquisition, 
Um, I, I enjoy it. Uh, I, I, I mean, honestly, cannabis has taken a hit all the way around. So it, it's hard to justify uh, stock buys right now in the industry. But I think body and mind is expanding at a very controlled yet somewhat aggressive pace. Indeed. Indeed. Talking about non-aggressive. I may have interested Javier with my body and mind. It may be. He'll decide later, y'all. <laughs> what else, Javier? What I really else? like you on your mind. I really do. Um, <laughs> so here's something on non-aggressive stuff. Um, we published a very cool list that I um, really recommend you go check out. Uh, Aaron Bree uh, wrote it for us. It's about 14 founder-friendly investment firms pioneering the cannabis space, right? <laughs> like Arcadian? Indeed. Those two are in there. And then, I mean, you got to go to com slash cannabis to find out Merida. where the other companies are. Yeah, I, could probably, I could probably list all 14, but I'm not going to do that. Right. Come on. Yeah. But that's because they have played a vital part in helping this space grow. And I say that jokingly, but I mean, this space would be nowhere without those investment firms taking chances, taking risks, and also playing a little bit of advocacy. Okay, now now, now I'm gonna quiz you, right? You said you can name all 14. Let's no. see if you can guess. No cheating. If, if you're cheating, it, it, it makes no sense as a game. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never know. You'll never know. Okay, I can name you it. You said Arcadian five, and Poseidon. You said Arcadian, Poseidon, Merida, Entourage, um, I would go with like a silver leaf. Are they on there? Um, intrinsic. Leaf. Not on there. Because it I think be. it's, yeah, it should be. Silver leaf should be on there. Doug Hanna's the bomb. Um, uh, intrinsic capital on the ancillary side um, is a good one. Um, there was, there's another one that I had in mind. So I got like, almost halfway there that included a few firms that are not included in the list. So uh, all 14 was not at all something I should have bragged about. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, aim for the stars, man. That's, we always, always aim to outperform sometimes. It works. I was mostly right. And honestly, Silverleaf should be on there. You back me up on that one. Yes, 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 it should. Well, part two of, of the article. Part two. Okay. Well, also, um, you know, MT video battles, just a, a quick response to your thing. Not that great of a dividend player. It's just, it's more in comparison to the cannabis stocks uh, that we're discussing IIPR in that sense is that they perform, they don't perform like other cannabis stocks, in my opinion. And Javier, you're giving me the weird, are you sure squint? No, no, I, I have. I actually got distracted wondering if, if MT video battle is, is something about freestyle rap, <laughs> and if it's freestyle right now <laughs> about cannabis stocks. Oh man, Javier no. <laughs> went in a loop. Um, <laughs> but anyway, that's that's my thought about IIPR. Is it like terrific dividends? No, um, but are they dividends? I mean, are, do they have dividends? Like that is honestly what you have to look at within the cannabis space. Um, so I, I want to touch on a few more. I want to shout out MCOA, Marijuana Company of America. I like this You company. like those guys. And I like that company okay. because I like Zeus. And I know they're not a competitor to the tier one MSOs, but what they're doing is just, it's a very broad strokes right now. And I think the next level of M&A or organic growth is what's going to be telling for that company. So that's why I keep them on my watch list. But they just made an acquisition uh, in California of a of um, VCB brands, VCF brands, something like that. Uh, basically, a three-tiered growing facility uh, was the most interesting part of that acquisition. Uh, and they they enter further into the THC space in, in yeah. the California grower side. Um, so I want to give a shout out to them. Frank0020 asks, is Planet 13 good? Immediately, yes. Just, yeah. Just a solid yes. Yeah, they're money majors. Yeah. I it, mean, you can like the concept, you can dislike the concept. I don't care. I mean, it's a fun for me, I like it. I think it's fun. But there's one thing these guys know how to do is make money. It's crazy. Some of the things that that, that uh, Larry, the, the co CEO, told us when we did the tour of the of, of the facility, you know, he, he he for instance, you know, told us he was they were making probably like a million dollars a month off 
of just the, the shelf space, you know, br different brands competing to be on their shelves, right? Yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> like, incredible. How good is a business model for people to pay you to sell their stuff? He's creating an entertainment company. And that's like, I mean, who would have thought that in cannabis, you have somebody creating an entertainment company, but that's what Planet 13 is doing. You know what? Talking about Planet 13, I want to show, uh, you know, throw out a little shout out to a very good friend, Craig and Doe. Uh, Craig is an actor. He, you may know him from, from many different things. He was in the Bitcoin theory and he has this product called Pokeball. It's like an ashtray uh, with a little stick, like a metal stick that sticks out of it. So you can clean your bowl and always keep your ash hole clean, as God. he says. <laughs> Thank um, you, Javi. Thank you. That's going in his gift guide, everybody. <laughs> Javier, <laughs> his personal cannabis gift guide for the holidays. You can find something that cleans your ash hole. So, um, I mean, shout out to Craig and shout out to Pokeball. You know, congrats on, on, on the milestone and let's see where that goes. I know they're, they're doing big moves in, 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 on the national arena um so Olu Segun has a question what's the situation with mike tyson's cannabis venture is that linked to any stock the no. new one well, yeah, yeah right yeah. there's all there's a couple but the new one no but he's also associated with uh philo now or chad In a way. so yeah. i mean so what i know is aristotle lumi right uh a lumi i'm Lumis. gonna yes yeah a Lumis. aristotle lumis i believe it is um, so this guy is the co-founder and chief business officer at Philo. He created other companies. He's also a co-founder at Wisana Health, which is a psychedelics company. And he is involved in Tyson 2.0. Yeah, um, and it's very exciting. Tyson is everywhere right now in the emerging market space. But Chad Bronstein and, and Aristotle Lumis are uh, utilizing him, uh, I think, very creatively in ways that celebrities haven't been utilized. But Mike Tyson is not investable currently, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, nor is Jim Belushi. Um, but uh, I, I would say we'll keep an eye on that. But honestly, good storylines. Like if you follow the like what Mike Tyson's a part of in the cannabis space, it's never a boring story. I mean, it, however, if you go to Benzinga Pro and, and search for, for Mike Tyson filtering for cannabis, I'm sure we can find several public company associations to Mike Tyson. Um, because I know that a lot of publicly traded companies do in fact do, do something with them, with, with him or his brands. So, um, Ooh, Ooh, Aaron, what'd we get? So what'd here's get? Some good Planet 13, right off the bat, Planet 13. Tyson 2.0 right? will debut in California, uh, on Planet 13 and cookies. Uh, so one way to play Tyson, Planet 13, another way to play Tyson, probably or possibly Hollister Biosciences. Let's see what- as we, Oh, Hollister, that's an interesting one. I have heard that one. Um, as we wait for uh, our guest to come over, um, I wanted to shout out a couple more items. One, Canopy Growth divests mm -hmm. a European asset, a C3 Cannabinoid Compound Company. Is that what it's called? Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. I didn't even know this was an asset of theirs. Kind of a compound company or C3. I don't know if, if like C3 is the full name. I, I I assume it's 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 one of those things where they just summarized it. There's a lot of the three C's in, in cannabis, like Benzinga Cannabis Capital Conference. Three C's. Yeah, I'm, we're gonna sue them for that. <laughs> um, so <laughs> that's a joke, everybody. That's a joke. Um, that, but that's, that's a famous. Ticker spamming, that's what it's known as in the, in the financial world, where you just tie a random ticker to some something else. So now we're tied to CGC. Yeah, so go, CGC, go, go doesn't, CGC doesn't, I feel like it's been unfairly just pummeled this year. Like, I mean, all, all cannabis has, right? I mean, we saw it in the chat. Uh, somebody said, every cannabis stock I own is beat down. Bro, sis, me too. Uh, <laughs> like it, it just is what it is right now. Yeah, um, but like, like they know, say in crypto, is like down. even more. Say what do you say? Like they say in crypto, it's you know we you got to be part of the hodl gang in in, in yeah, in Kansas, right? Hodl, hodl, hodl y'all, hodl. Um, but in, in regards to canopy, it just seems like it's been 
the leader in, in stocks hit? And is that because it's it's got so much name recognition or is it actually performing that badly? To me, I don't think it's the latter. No. I, I think it's just that it had re name recognition prior to this absolute stock collapse in the cannabis space. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, so um, one last one I will call out. Apparently, if you're smoking cannabis in Michigan, you're smoking some mold. Sorry, y'all. Um, <laughs> that's not all of it, but they released that 64,000 pounds of flour back into the market. You see that, Javi? That's crazy. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the situation was completely. Uh, I didn't have time to read the article we just published an hour ago explaining the recall crisis in Michigan, but you can go to benzinga.com slash cannabis after the show and check out what happened in Michigan. SMDL is tradable. Yeah. Yes. I'll give you that MTV. <laughs> yeah. That is a completely blanket statement that is 100% true. Yeah. yeah. But like John Oliver yeah. says, this is true. Sundial, <laughs> Sundial is tradable. Um, there's volume, you know, I, I think we're getting Foch on here shortly. Um, but one other one that I think maybe you and Patrick covered last week, but I think I would love to call out a state house, uh, or what will be known as state house. It's the combined company of Harborside, uh, two other companies that I'm blanking up loud pack and something else. Um, uh, but basically Harborside, um, fighting back in California, you know, trying to retake control of that market. Uh, they are an OG, of course, in the space. Uh, and the leadership team over there uh, engaged some, a few third-party firms that really drove this. Uh, and obviously, this includes some uh, C-suite additions as well, which honestly, I'm a big fan of. Ed Schmoltz, I think, takes over as CEO, uh, which I'm super excited about. I, I've known him for a while in the space, and I think he's awesome. Um, so in, in terms of, um, state house is what it will be. Um, I, I think it closes in March or when it's supposed to. And, and I, I like, I like to see how they are reinventing the, the company into something different and new and probably, you know, all encompassing. Yeah. So state house, I like, it's a big player in California. Now it's going to be a big, uh, I think com competition to glass house, to the parent company. I think one of the bigger MSOs in the state is Jushi and Curly for there. And I think Harborside just upped its game, you know, and now calls State House. So we'll, we'll try and, you know, we'll make the transition to calling it State House as we go here. Frank, 020020, any CBD beverage going big, hopefully. Um, a couple I would call out. One is the new product that's going to be released by Flora Growth Corp uh, with the Lamborghini um, yep. brand. Um, and then the other, of course, it, you can't not talk about Canopy. Um, you know, I, I think Canopy. Quattro. Is That's the one. Quattro. That's oh, Quattro. Quattro, yeah. So Canopy, CGC on the NASDAQ, that is, I, I think, has been a big leader in the CBD beverage space. Yeah, totally. I think we, we have Ben almost. Do we have him? Do we? Yeah, no. More, yeah, yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Aaron, if we got him, man, let's bring him over. Let's get to this. I'm excited for this interview. Ben Arnett is the co-founder and president, right? Am I right? Co-founder and president of Foch. Hey, guys. How you doing today? Ben, good, my friend. How are you doing? Good, good. Yeah, sorry about the uh, the last second switch up. I know we had a couple people on some cultivation tours, and uh, I got this dropped on me uh, last second, so I'm, uh, I'm actually at home taking care of uh, some COVID sick family members. So, uh, no, oh, all good, my uh, friend. The I, I hope they get better soon, though. Yeah, definitely. We appreciate you joining, and we won't take up too much of your time. We're just going to ask you some very difficult and revealing questions about your yeah. personal life. The, the, the <laughs> most perfect. difficult one is: Are you and Brett brothers, or what's no, the situation? So Brett and I actually, uh, the entire FOS founding team knew each other from Minnesota. Um, Brett and I linked up when we moved to Las Vegas, God, seven years ago, um, right when things started going from medical to rec, um, we kind of jumped into the space. Um, we were investing into cultivations, real estate, um, REITs, anything we can get our hands on. Wait, wait, you, so you're not related? You share the same surname or am I, am I confused? 
Uh, he's Brett Stevens. I'm Ben Arnett. Oh, I thought he was Brett Arnett as well. So we, you were always on the whole time. I think Javier's just making stuff up now, Ben. Right? We're not on a good track. You're here. like, that's amazing. You both have the same last name and you're not related. <laughs> <laughs> Crazier things have happened in cannabis. Oh, 100%. 100%. <laughs> yeah. So you started as an investor in the space. Yeah, essentially, we both kind of started as investors. Um, we'd raise money through some friends and family, and we're just deploying capital where we thought uh, we're making smart moves. We thought we were. <laughs> and then we had, uh, like a lot of other people in the desert, found out growing weed, um, HPS lights, you know, obviously very hard to run, um, switching to night cycles, burnt a crop down, um, HVAC lines freezing over. I mean, you name it, we ran into it. And we were like, yep. what is going on here? Um, and through that entire process, uh, we were posting all this on social media and uh, a friend of mine from high school, robotics, laser engineer, you know, multiple patents on heart defibrillators, worked for Boston Scientific, Medtronic, I mean, a, a very smart, smart cat. Um, he had saw all this and had reached out saying, hey, man, I, I noticed that you're you're in the cannabis space. I've been working and designing this light for three years. What do you think? And it was right after we've been dealing with frozen HVAC lines because of lighting. And I was like, this looks super interesting. Let's check this out. And it was a high powered LED light, um, very similar look to our A3i. Um, but this was uh, obviously uh, the first rendition of the light. Um, we were interested. We flew them out. We actually built the uh, the first half a dozen prototypes in a motocross shop that Brett and I owned. Um, we had a fun little business where we just built high end race dirt bikes for like the Baja 1000 and stuff like that. Um, so we built these prototype lights in a, in a motocross shop put them up into a couple grows. And what we saw was plants growing sideways away from HPS lights into ours, uh, better bud development, candy <laughs> that wasn't really That's seen insane. in FEDs yet. And we're like, Oh, you know, light bulb pun intended. I know what you mean. I've, I've seen exactly that, that kind of thing, right. Where, where you have like different, you know, for, for like home setups, right. Yep. But there's one light that is much better than the other one. Like you have like sodium bulb on the one hand and, and like very good, technology, you know, like technologically advanced uh, LED on the other, and you see how the the plants start to tilt. Oh, yeah. Oh, so like, my lines is the, the plants or something. Um, you, can, you can have grow offs, you can do it based off nutrients, lighting, what have you. Uh, the, the, the plants don't lie, right? They'll, they'll tell you what they like more. Um, and it shows in growth, it shows in development, it shows in testing. Um, obviously, that's getting better and better. But uh, as soon as we had saw that we had um something serious where we were outgrowing hps's with some hand-built lights obviously we did a full pivot uh divested of everything cultivation and real estate wise we did a small you know friends and family round and then for three years before we released any product we didn't want like a, a me too light um we knew it was going to be hard to come to the market after so many just bad leds underpowered you're not getting penetration larf you know some, yeah. you know, sacrificing quality and yield for a little energy savings and you know, we, we had heard it all through the years. So we, we did three years of, I mean, intense r and I mean, we tested every LED under the sun, Philips, Cree, Osram, Samsung, uh, what have you, different drivers, different grades of aluminum. And uh, we wanted to come to something, you know, really special to the market. I mean, our, our, our integrity was everything when we were building these products. And we put a lot of time and energy and effort into it. And we wanted to make sure that we brought something to the market that wouldn't be able to be phased out before the warranty was up. You know, we wanted it to be so just built right for what we're doing um, that, I mean, in 10, 20 years, you're still going to like pick up an A3i and go, that thing will grow plants. You know, <laughs> that's what we were looking to do. Um, so three years of R&D, we came up with different spectrums for different stages of plant growth, intensities, touchscreen controllers, adjustable bars for making sure that uniformity canopy was, you know, always being uh, uh, monitored and adjusted. Um, and obviously we built everything to be a little more high powered, mm -hmm. uh, one, because the cannabis plant can do it. We had been doing some pretty interesting research with, uh, Lycor. Uh, they have that 6,800 machine. You actually clamp it onto a fan leaf and it will tell you the photosynthetic rates in real time of these plants. And it can run different tests, whether it be, you know, um, temperature, humidity, mm -hmm. CO2, um, different spectrums of light, light intensity. And we found out these plants can take upwards of 3000 PPFD. Um, obviously, there's a point of diminishing returns where it's like, all right, how much feeding is really going to be bud production that people are willing to pay and look for? Um, but again, that's, that's a lot of it's up to genetics. But uh, another thing that comes with having high-powered LEDs, not only being able to give the plant the right amount of light, 
is uh, being able to run them at 50%, 60%, and kind of ramping up, um, not just running your lights at 100% at day six. In our minds, if your lights are at 100% mm-hmm. on day six of flower, there's no way that's enough light at day 60. Yeah. So, um, we built everything with the intent of kind of ramping up, and one that does a couple of things, it makes the fixture run a lot cooler. Uh, the longevity of the fixture goes through the roof. Um, and you're giving your plants the right amount of light. We kind of had to get people a stigma, like run 100% of your light, run 100% of your light. Like, no, we're, we're not here to run 100% of light. We're here to give the plant the exact amount of light it needs at that given point in time. Like, let's, <laughs> let's worry about the plant, not run our equipment at 6,000 yeah. PMs. There's myths around a lot of this, right? From, you know, derived from home growing and trying to optimize every square feet. It's like, yeah, give it more fertilizer. Give it more of this, more of that. Yeah, a lot of everything. It's like, I mean, <laughs> maybe it's okay. Maybe you get bigger buds, but at the expense of quality and, and taste and, and healthiness, probably, many times. Yeah, I, I always call it a moving jigsaw puzzle. Um, you know, when you start in, like when we have to go to an HPS grow or say we're doing a swap out to an A3I system. So... They're probably getting 800 to 1,000 PPFD on average, um, just from the hundreds of grows I've seen. So when you go up to an A3I where we're going to probably put, you know, 1,500 PPFD down, um, you just can't run the same environmental control. So they're probably doing 68 degrees to combat the hot, hot light. So we'll go in, we'll change it to 82 degrees, you know, to more match leaf surface temperature or ideal leaf surface temperature. They're probably going to need less HVAC, but they're going to need more dehumidification. You're going to need more feeding. You're going to need more CO2. I mean, there's there's a whole different system that goes on with with adding more light. Um, and that's kind of the moving jigsaw puzzle that is commercial cultivation. Um, I always kind of describe it like trying to beef up an old muscle car. You know, you can't just grab a 69 Camaro and throw some brand new supercharged 700 horsepower engine in it without changing the transmission, the clutch, the brakes, the axles, you know, the suspension. Otherwise, you're going to something's going to break, <laughs> you know, you're going to find a light yeah. pretty quick. So, so I kind of described it as like the lights being the engine in the grow, that driving force that, you know, is going to boost the photosynthetic rates in the plants. But now, you know, say you don't have enough dehue, then your VPD is going to, you know, top out. So it's about being able to control every aspect of that grow based on how much you can push. Um, and then it's really up to you and your genetics to decide really how far you really want to want to take it, whether it be quality, whether it be, you know, production. I mean, we've seen them both. We've got live soil growers that absolutely knock it out of the park and they don't want anything more than 1,200 mm-hmm. PPFD. Then we have guys that only want to do extraction and they're like, I don't care what it looks like. I just want biomass. So we got guys yeah. that do two different methodologies, but um, being able to dial the lights up and down allows you to kind of cater to both of those groups. So looking at, you know, kind of performance here, I just read a, a press release from you guys in October, uh, which we can get to the overall point of it here shortly, but it, you guys... Offer a refund if your product does not increase yield. Is that correct? Yeah, that was one of the, the first things that we had uh, came out with when we started our company. Oh. oh. Yeah, can you guys still hear me? Yeah, there you go. I'm not sure what happened. But yeah, we can hear you now. And now we can. There we can. There you go. Maybe a message came in or something. They, they always switch from. <laughs> so, oh, there uh, yeah. Okay. So don't share your screen, whoever that was. Um, no, that was it. That was us. We just played. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. I think I'm losing them. Um, so, guys, as we get Ben back, and Ben, if you can hear us, we could hear you. Um, but basically, he, they, yeah, they guarantee a refund if it doesn't increase yield. And then in the same press release, they go on to say that they've actually increased yield 25 to 60% on average, on average. And they sell these lights internationally. It's really incredible um, what they've yeah. done. So, it's, a, it's a courageous move too, honestly. Yeah. Well, as we get Ben back, uh, Aaron, 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 Aaron. sounds like a DJ. <laughs> Ben, can you hear us, man? Yeah, sorry. I, I had a phone call come and I had to turn my phone on. Uh, do not disturb. Sorry about that. No worries, my friend. So, yeah, you were saying about the guarantee there. Yeah, so that was one of the hardest uh, things that we you know, kind of found out when we started this company going into grows, telling people that we had a light that could put down more than an HPS and, you know, it'll outgrow it. I mean, you're basically six years ago, you're getting laughed out of buildings. Um, <laughs> so what's the easiest way to say, no, 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 this LED is different like every other <laughs> LED, yeah. 
manufacturer on the planet says. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Everyone and pumps. <laughs> I'll give you your money back if it doesn't increase your yields, or if, if you're not happy with the end all product, whether you're going for yield or quality. If I can't make the, your plant do something different than your current lighting system, I'll, I'll buy the lights back. What's a catch? Um, I mean, what's a catch, and how, how do you control for like? you know, genetics or a grower's ability to grow, right? That's a great <laughs> question. Uh, I'm actually glad you asked this. That was one of the first things we thought of is what if these people don't want to increase their temperature, humidity, CO2, like that moving jigsaw puzzle I just had mentioned. Um, obviously through all our R&D, we kind of found some sweet spots that we saw these increased yields. We have, I mean, it started out with just a couple clients, a dozen clients. Now we've got, you know, 380 clients and 18 different wow. countries and growing. Um, but now that we have almost an army of FOS growers who communicate with each other, they talk to each other, we have an in-house horticultural team. Um, you know, it's not just handing someone this high powered light and saying, you're going to grow a ton of weed with this guaranteed. It's, there's a lot more fine tuning than that. I mean, we look at your current system, we look at your genetics, we look at your, you know, environmentals, your infrastructure, we fly engineers out. Um, we will put our Hort team on site and we'll do weekly update calls. If something's not going right, we'll fly a guy out there for a week if we have to. Um, it's it's kind of like handing the you know the keys to a Ferrari to a 16 year old kid. That would be, you know, a, a, a not a smart move, I guess. And uh, what we kind of tried to do was say, all right, we're going to give you the entire Ferrari F1 race team to teach you how to drive this Ferrari. So um, really, kind of taking that 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 pain that first harvest pain or like the the learning curve out of it and saying hey here's the best way to do this temperature humidity co2 wise nutrients feeding schedules crop steering whatever you're doing let's let's look at it let's fine tune it to our system and let's rock and roll um and uh, in seven years i don't think we've we've never bought back a fixture and we've actually never taken down an a3 i room um we've never had one of those rooms replaced by other fixtures and it's I mean, it's obviously a, we, we're, we're super proud about that because, you know, one, it's it's a testament to the technology. And two, uh, we also operate on less than a 1% failure rate as well, which is uh, <laughs> uh, fantastic, um, which we do third party quality assurance, uh, three different stages of that, um, as well as on site. And, you know, another thing that does is one increases the integrity of our company to uh, less upset clients. Like if you had a 10, 20 percent failure rate, which I know some people do. Um, losing that many lights in a room would just be one, a pain state for your clients. And yeah. two, it's like, how many more, I, I don't want to replace that many fixtures. I mean, that's more cargo ships. That's more materials. It's more engineers trying to, you know, retrofit. It, it's a nightmare. So we do a couple things on the front end or on the back end that kind of allow us to, to really boast that 1%, uh, less than 1% failure rate, which is uh, a, a huge part of our, our, uh, our culture here. As uh, MSOs grow, I'm assuming you work with MSOs uh, along with several other types of companies, but uh, as they grow, I mean, I would imagine, do you expand into different states with them? Do you go from, uh, I mean, you help these companies initially at a beginner phase and or medium phase and uh, help them increase their product output. So I'd imagine that you've grown a lot based on your, you know, lasting partnerships. Yeah, hundred um, percent. I've kind of always told that to people as well. There's very few people that uh, are involved in just one cultivation. Um, usually if you got a guy who's got a decent sized cultivation, he's got his finger in about two or three. Um, and then the big MSOs, yeah, as soon as they kind of see success uh, with a certain system, methodology, uh, what have you, you know, they kind of hold those partners tight. And again, it's one of those ones where your integrity is everything. And if you show up on site, you're flying engineers out, you're helping them solve problems more than just lighting like we're not just a lighting manufacturer first and foremost we are for sure an engineering firm every one of our fixtures is designed mm -hmm. in-house through cad solidworks um we work with fenmore and craig on you know an aggressive patent strategy and ip strategy multiple patents on all of our fixtures um getting ready to off i mean offering in-house finance all sorts of stuff like that to help these msos you know move more aggressively um that's one thing too is obviously upfront cost lighting is always a super expensive one so starting to offer more equipment finance options so people can go into multiple projects at once without being um, confined by cash flow has been a, has been a big advantage as well. Um, but yeah, as the MSO start moving into new states, like, I mean, as soon as Florida opened up, I mean, as soon as they announced it a week later, my phone had, it was going off the hook for people saying that we got a license, we got a license, we got to get you out there. And, you know, New York, the same thing. Um, it's Australia. That's another big one that we're getting into right now. That market's, uh, going to be a, a pretty nice one, I think. 
Very, very cool. Actually, I, I, I wanted to ask some quick questions from the chat, but before that, you mentioned uh, international uh, markets. And before you, you joined the stream, you know, I, I was saying that, that for me, uh, the lighting business is especially interesting because it really doesn't matter uh, if cannabis is legal or not in, in a country, you can still sell the lights and people will still be buying them, right? Um, of course, you don't want to not be non-compliant in any way, but at the same time, you're, you're selling lights, you know, you, you're not telling people what to use them for. So like, what, which countries are you selling at right now? You mentioned 16 and are there, are they all like corporate clients or do you sell also, also to retail? Yes. Yeah, so another great question. Um, so some of the bigger ones, obviously we have like Iceland, uh, Spain, uh, we're getting into Germany, Australia, Thailand, um, Israel, um, obviously Canada, Paraguay, Uruguay, um, all the way down through South America. That's starting to take off. Mexico is going to be an exciting one, I think, once they get wrapped up. But uh, when we go overseas, we, we usually try to find a nice partner or a distributor to work with, someone who's got a good foothold um, in that region and kind of lean on their relationships, networks, their you know distribution through whether it be retailers, hydro shops. Um, but then... We usually always get uh, contacted directly through large cultivators because, you know, they just tend to reach out to the manufacturer directly. So a little bit of both. And Perfect. You, you partner with some other leading uh, cannabis ancillary companies, though, right? Uh, they, they lease your equipment, if I'm not mistaken. Which one? Not lease your equipment per se, but uh, to my knowledge, somebody mentioned recently you work with, is it is it GrowGen or Agrify or somebody of that nature? Yeah, Grogen, uh, Grogen buys a lot of our fixtures. Um, we actually did the Belushi project with them. That was a lot of fun. Um, and they reach I mean, whenever they have a, a commercial client, they have a pretty robust commercial side to their business. So whenever a, a cultivator says, I want to use FOS, they just reach out and we'll generate light maps, work with their commercial team on deadlines and, you know, getting engineers out there, scheduling uh, hort or uh, horticultural team site visits, whatever they really need. Um, I mean, because at the end of the day, whether they buy the lights from GrowGen or us directly, um, their success is our success. So we, we definitely like to make sure, regardless of who you buy our lights from, um, if you have an issue, obviously you reach out and just we will get to the bottom of it. Whether you need an engineer, horticulturist, genetics, um, we really try to roll the red carpet out for anyone and everyone using our fixtures. Because, I mean, we can't make these amazing claims and awesome videos that you see us yeah. put up the time uh, if our clients weren't actually doing it. I mean, right. all the data that we do collect is always third party. So it's not us just like, no one wants to hear it from the LED manufacturer. It's like, it's white yeah. <laughs> no sure. to hear us talk about our stuff. But so, uh, when you see and can hear the excitement of a grower, or, um, two or people through the grows, that's another thing is because we do kind of take that customer service to the next level. We have more of a partnership relationship with our clients and uh, seeing is believing. So it's, you know, the classic Tommy boy, you can get a good look at a steak, but uh <laughs> Uh, we bring people on site all the time and we let them, and we do it without any FOS representatives uh, on site or present. We just say, go talk to the grower, the cultivator, let them tour you through the spot, ask questions without us, you know, in the room or in your ear. You know, we want you to just ask away and be 100% transparent. Um, that's kind of the goal. And, you know, we don't have really aggressive, pushy sales tactics. Um, again, just let the plants, let the plants do the talking. Um, we encourage people to test. You're about to make a huge investment into your cultivation. Don't just pick one guy that says he's the best. Go test mm -hmm. them. Go see what your grower works the best with. You never even know. Um, yeah. You know, because sometimes our lights aren't for everyone. If they have small lids and maybe you only need a 600, 400 watt light, we have those. Um, but there's a lot of people that have those. So do I think we'll grow more? Yeah, but we might be able to offer better customer service. The light levels might be the exact same. Who knows? But um, we always just tell people to get out, test, and, you know, do your due diligence. Uh, I have three rapid fire questions for you and then I'll let Javi take it away. Um, first one is from the chat, the American one. Do you still get over three pounds a light? Yeah. And, and that's a, that's a trick question. I know, a trick question. Obviously, yes, we can get three pounds a light. We can get a lot more. Um, our lights have, again, we've got growers who run them on 25 square feet of five by five. And this is the A3I. And that's like the smallest you can run that fixture at is a five by five without it like hitting other a three eyes. Um, we've got some guys that run it on 46 square feet. I mean, they run it on a seven by seven. So, or 47 square feet. It's an absolute, you know, ridiculous setup. Um, with obviously the bigger square footage, sometimes you lose uniformity, but if you want to do per light, I mean, they're 
they're knocking out of the park because they're doing 47 square feet. Right. Um, we usually like to do grams per square foot <clears throat> just because that's one where it yeah. doesn't matter if like, for an instance, when you go HPS to FOS A3I, you're probably going to end up with 30% less fixtures. So if it's a hundred light HPS room and you only use 70 of our lights, you know, doing the pounds per light almost doesn't make sense because we have yeah. a bigger footprint. It's always going to be more pounds per light, but grams per square foot stays constant, you no know, matter how many fixtures you're throwing mm -hmm. in the room, no matter what fixture you're using. Grams per square foot is a great way for us to really nail down um, yield, uh, increases yeah. yield. And, and a great way for the rest of the world to understand what you're talking about, by the way. <laughs> what was that? It's the first time, the cannabis industry is the first time I've ever understood Americans talking about measurements, right? Because for you, it's like pounds and miles and stuff that no one else understands. But now, like with grams, I'm like, oh, ha, ha. Look, 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 that. <laughs> that's incredible. Okay, two more questions for you. One, uh, are you going to be investable in the near future? Like, can, can individual Ooh. investors take advantage of of the success that you're having as a company? Um, who knows? I know that uh, we're we're kind of heads down right now. Uh, you know, I mean, wrapping, up this, <laughs> uh, <laughs> wrapping up this year. But uh, I know next year we've got a lot of big plans. Um, obviously, getting breaking into a bunch of new markets, and uh, you know, we have some really fun partnerships coming about too that are really going to bring some some new products to the industry, um, as well as some some really fun educational pieces as well with some geneticists and universities and all the other good stuff as well. And then last question from me, where do I get that hat? That's freaking awesome. Man. <laughs> so I'm glad you mentioned. So we're actually going um, all, this is 100% made of hemp and bamboo. Yes. Oh, and color, it's got the Fos Louis sign and that it's actually got a print of one of our, one of our grows Dude. on the lid. <laughs> that is yeah. awesome. So I'll send you, yeah. give me, uh, give me your guys' email or your, obviously your address and I'll, I'll send your guys' offices uh, a little care package. I will got, brand that all like around New York. We got black. Place. We got all sorts of fun stuff. Oh, my friend. You're going to see me wearing that around New York City with my juicy mask. Uh, oh, awesome. <laughs> wait, wait, I, 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 I want to double down on this because you asked if, if they're going to be investable. Are you, have you considered going public at all? I mean, I think we get, I think we get approached by at least, you know, a SPAC a month, you know, for the last year. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's, they're, they're, like, they're as bad as LED lighting companies on LinkedIn. So, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what our team wants to do. I know obviously we've got a bunch of meetings and uh, some stuff that we're going to have to figure out what we want to do uh, for next year. But I mean, right now we're just having a lot of fun. I mean, it's a, it's a group of friends and family, best friends uh, that started this six years ago and we've had tremendous growth and I mean, truly blessed for what we've been able to build and accomplish and achieve. And we're just bringing on, you know, bigger, better, smarter guys, better partnerships, and we're, we're having fun doing it. Um, we're having a lot of fun and doing it. So we're, we're in no interview. rush to, to leave the industry. Absolutely, man. Well, great interview. I appreciate you being here. I think we all got a lot out of this. I learned a lot about lighting and the importance it of it. But, you know, there, I think there's a lot of a uh, lot more conversation to be had. And I know the audience is excited for being able to take part uh, in FOS once uh, once that is available. So keep us updated. Let us know the news and uh, we'll definitely keep our audience updated as well, my friend. But thanks for being here. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Really enjoyed this. Appreciate it, Ben. We'll talk I'll to you soon. Hats, too. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. I'm emailing you right after this. Perfect. <laughs> awesome. Talk I'll to you soon. Right this time. All right. See you guys. Let's see if I get it right this time. Ben Arnett is the co-founder and president of Fose. And now I know how to, how to pronounce the company name as well. He just joined us at Benzinga Cannabis Hour. What's your summer news? What do you all think of it? Honestly, like I love, I loved it. <laughs> I thought he was great. I, I echo MT video battles. I think he's incredibly knowledgeable and he wasn't, selling he was putting his money where his mouth is as far as i'm concerned yeah so yeah. i mean honestly yeah. like I, I enjoyed that i like learning about different parts of the space and what makes it go and these guys are as important to the industry as Kira leaf and gti are I, I would love to know from 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 the chat right if, if you like shows where we're not talking about finance all the time right if, do, do you want to just hear about finance and stocks are you interested in the in, in the industry as a whole right like for me it's like this is a super interesting conversation, right? It, it's a balanced show where, where we talk a little bit about stocks, a little bit about random weed stuff. <laughs> random weed stuff. Uh, but I want to know. I want. I want to know what. Wait, 
So, so yeah, as they drop that in there, I want to say, Javi, we did have a question earlier in the chat from thinking about it. Did they talk Hexo yet? And I know you had a bit, uh, a little bit of line in your notes for the show. If you want to talk about that, I don't want to talk about that, but I, you wrote it down. So I think you do. Uh, and oh, then, yeah. No, yeah, so go for that first. I am dropping a question and not an answer because you got to go to benzinga.com slash cannabis to find out the answer. But my question is an analysis question, of course, as well. What makes Hexo an acquisition target despite its cash burn and dilution risk? Benzinga.com slash cannabis to find the answer. You're such a tease. Oh, yes. You're such a tease. <laughs> so You're such a coffees. <laughs> I mean, Hexo is still a market leader. And that is what's insane to me about all of this the past like five ish, five, six months. You know, they're they're still a market share leader. I mean, I mean, honestly, like Hexo, it, there's a lot to like uh, there. There's a lot to dislike there. But if you all read their re exactly. most recent earnings report, they published a path forward um, that talked about um, how they are becoming more efficient, their management changes, uh, how they are trying to improve cash flow. Uh, it, it was very telling in in a way uh, and then of course they recapped a lot of probably what you and i could just you know guess but at, at the end of the day i think hexo is trying to slowly climb back into the conversation um i think it's going to take more than the path forward or the path forward times two but i don't know that's quite the question that's a good comment yeah, I have a couple more news items, just random news items. We don't even need to comment on them. <laughs> Berlin introduced an edible hemp ticket for bus and subway riders to alleviate Christmas stress. <laughs> okay, what do you think of that? It's just, Would you eat it though? Like, no, not if somebody's handing me a ticket. <laughs> I'm not eating that? Are you kidding me? Uh, that is funny. Okay, and some serious news. I, I think that's all I have for, for today. Next Leaf Solutions. I know you like them as well. That is oil FF. So oil. They're unique. Oil. Yes. And uh, they're they're doing a marketed public offering for proceeds of like $2.3 million, $3 million Canadian. And they priced it at uh, old point two uh, Canadian dollars per unit. So... Very interesting. We'll keep an eye on on, on, on what happens there. I mean, with. And if you guys aren't aware, Next Leaf Solutions is very, very focused on IP. I think some 90 patents they've applied for and they received, they received those patents in a lot of those cases. But they're international, U.S. and Canadian uh, and, and market regionally based. I mean, it, it's a very interesting company. And honestly, they have done pretty well over the past six months. They have actually been a growth percentage leader in the mm -hmm. can the Canadian cannabis space. Indeed. So if you want to look at an interesting story that's done it in a different way in Canada, Next Leaf Solutions is a is a good one to look at. Yeah, and it seems like an interesting entry point. 20 cents, 20 Canadian yeah, I mean, cents. It's better than, it's than it, the radio company. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a very interesting company. And if you want to talk about acquisitions and just like, I, you know, I'm not saying I think they are, but like when you look at this from a distance, it, that's it's a, a good acquisition. Target, yeah. That's a valuable company to acquire with that many patents and that much IP. It is. So, um, I mean, thoughts there, but I mean, Javier, you, you left the frigging carrot out for us, man, with is Hexo an acquisition target thinking about it. I like your positivity uh, and, or, you know, honestly, I, I like Hexo. I've always liked Hexo. I've always liked Canopy. I like a lot of these Canadian leaders. I'm a huge fan of Village Farms. Um, mm -hmm. but, you know, when it comes to performance, it, it's been a rough few quarters for Hexo. And I think if you look ahead, but it's for everyone. I yeah. mean, especially for Hexo. To yeah. be fair. I'm just saying but you can't discount what has happened this year when looking ahead to invest in 2022. That's all I'm saying. And I, I think, you know, we would be ill-advised to say otherwise. Indeed. That's Anything my... else? Sticking out? Are we, we're going to end on me trashing the cannabis industry on cannabis. Hours. No, no, that's why. That's why. Yeah. Well, what, what else? I mean, if not, here's, here's one. 
this might be the largest ever CBD effectiveness study. Uh, Radical Aces looked at nearly 3,000 participants in a uh, longitudinal real-world evidence uh, CBD research project to determine the effectiveness of botanical products containing CBD uh, with 13 different brands. A few of the most interesting results here were that participants experienced a 71% improvement in their well-being on average. 63% experienced a clinically meaningful improvement in anxiety, 61% an improvement in sleep quality, 47% a clinically meaningful improvement in pain. And uh, I think that that's about it. I mean, th those are the most interesting, but but um, I, mean, I like to see that, that people feel CBD is effective. It's, it's something that I get constantly. Hey, does it work? Marijuana CBD derived or hemp derived CBD? I, I, I'd assume both. It doesn't matter. It's the same. It's the same compound. Uh, true. Uh, all right. Well, hmm. I, I, I don't know. I don't think you're not going to, that, that's a little pull and wool over my eyes there. That hemp CBD is in the industry right now is not the same as marijuana derived CBD be simply because it's bastardized. No I think it's bastardized. There is, it's easier to produce, uh, or, or to grow hemp and some people are just doing CBD, like whatever, but good CBD from hemp and good CBD from, from, from marijuana, if you want to call it, should be the same. You like, know what? If, you, if you go you to a lab just... that is doing like an, a CBD isolate, you should be getting the same product. You, I mean, yes, you should be, but I, I'm going to be honest. I have yet to have hemp derived CBD that has had any effect on me. You're forcing me to go to, for more news. You, you told me you don't want to end the show by bashing the industry. I am. We have two minutes to give me something good here. <laughs> so there's there's an accelerator in, 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 in Europe um, that is partially funded by the government of Malta, which, by the way, became recently, uh, you know, this week announced they were legalizing adult use cannabis. This uh, uh, incubator or accelerator is called Tech for Can Europe Accelerator, and they are now calling for entries. If you're selected, you will get a 12 week pro program and receive funding up to of up to 100,000 euros, which is more or less $113,000 plus mentoring worth checking it out. More details on menzinga.com slash cannabis. Again, tech for can is the name of the creator. And I love the Malta news. That's fantastic. More European countries getting on board. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So everybody, Sorry. Do you in Malta, like becoming an exporter or something like that, or yeah, I, I think it's more about geographic positioning right now. Yeah, talk about being I in the middle of the world. But yeah. I mean, I mean, Malta is. I feel like companies like MPX International, mm -hmm. I, I think, have, have some facil or some assets there. Um, and Tiny Pie Media, how about starting the Benzinga Cannabis Company there? <laughs> Javier can be president. If I can be uh, CEO. I'm fine with that. I'm about to be like, Javier is not responding. And I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, guys, this is Cannabis Hour. Here we are. We had an amazing interview today with Foch. Check out Cannabis Daily. We get five minutes of stock news every morning. Benzinga.com slash podcasts. Everybody, we are now starting to plan our Miami getaway. Benzinga's Ooh. Cannabis Capital Conference in Miami. Wait, this is the primary. This is a primer. We haven't even issued a press release yet. We're spilling the beans. No, I mean, Patrick talked about it like last week. So yeah, uh, technically it's been prime before. Um, <laughs> so I, I can get him in trouble. But <laughs> basically, we're, guys, you guys can come and meet these executives. Like we're going to be in Miami at the Fountain Blue. We're going to have industry leaders, industry leading investors, service providers, the Kim Rivers, the Nick Vitas, all of these major C-suites. Uh, are going to be coming there. And now we're finally opening it up in an in real life event to our audience uh, of every day. So you guys, you know, we want you there. So please look at tickets, benzinga.com slash events or bzcannabis.com. I mean, it's just, it's just a perfect event, dude. Like, and then, then it's not I because it's us. like, it's honestly, it's my favorite event to go to, like out of all of our own conferences as well. 
like the Miami conference is the one for me. Like just it's it's such a fun time, y'all. It's cool and weather, like it's very nice weather. It's a nice city. The location, like the fountain blue, is just crazy and it's fun and it's, it's like, like you get, you get all the great content and the networking and the you know and the raising money and the making millions if you're smart enough. But also like you get a terrace overlooking this clear blue ocean. And people are just like, you know, having lunch, having a drink, you know, actually closing deals. So you get the best of both worlds. You get yeah. you get like the education and the networking, but also the, the, the chill environment. You know, I think there's even gonna be a VIP room this time. Oh, around. there will. There will be. So y'all check it out. Benzinga.com slash events. You can check out all of our events, but especially the cannabis ones for this particular show. Benzinga.com slash podcasts for me on Cannabis Daily. Benzinga.com slash cannabis for Javier and all of his amazing news. And just to give a quick shout out, love that you guys are active in the chat today. I love engaging with you guys. Empty video battles. You took it right out of my mouth. CMBS is a wonderful ETF, but MSOS, of course, is the one that a lot of American uh, investors follow. Or American oh, yeah, like, go investors. check out CMBS, man. An ETF that is in cannabis managed by the one and only Tim yeah. Seymour is a winner. Is a winner in my book. Yeah, so. I mean, and this is not advice. CMBS is is the bomb. Ooh, YCBD earnings tonight. MTV, MT Video Battles. Let's come on the show, dude. Uh, be <laughs> more efficient. Um, all right, guys. That's it. For us. Whatever. I'm out. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, MT Video Battles. You might be our, our fourth host for the show starting in the new year. Um, but Javier Hase, you're the bomb, man. Uh, I'll see right. you guys next year. This is my last YouTube show uh, for the year. So Ooh. am I? Uh, you can catch me on Cannabis Daily. So peace out. See you. Peace.